Hello, everybody. Today, we're doing another SFM tutorial. Uh, I haven't been uploading lately. Um, uh, that's mainly because I had to go over um, on a vacation for a little bit. But I'm back now. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to make animatronic-like movements. Now, I don't see a whole lot of people, um, especially new people, uh, because this is something that I don't think that the tutorials ever showed you. For Valve. And that's mainly what I use to learn SFM. But that's how to make animatronic movements. Um, using tangents. Right here. A lot of people don't use these. But they are like probably one of the most useful things in the graph editor. That you could use. Now. If you were to make. Uh, per se here, Toy Freddy, turn, you know, make him wait a few seconds, turn back. You could see when he turns here, he kind of has a bounce. And we don't want, we want him to just, as soon as it reaches here, just stop moving. Um, now, this is where tangents come in. Now, basically, these things are probably some of the easiest thing, like, to edit. In SFM. Um, so we moved him along the Y axis. And as you can see, when he turns this area, it goes up. And this is mainly what's giving him that whole turn motion. Um, and this is very easy to fix. You can just select everything and press 1. However, um, whenever you do use 1, it just turn, stop. Um, and I'm not a big fan of this. Um, personally, I like to use the flat tangents instead of the linear tangents. Um, they just look better, in my opinion. So as you can see, when he turns, he kind of has a more of like a, you know, smoother in and out. So basically, right now, you could stop watching the video, since that's really the basics of making animatronic movement. But there are a few more things that can make this right here look a whole lot better. And one of those things is making it smooth. Now, um, making it smooth is probably, it's like, super easy. So... All you have to do, really, is just go into the motion editor and make sure everything's selected. Everything right here has to be selected. And what you're going to do, we're in the procedural uh, thing over here. There's a slider called smooth. Now, we're going to drag it out once. Now, already, you can't really tell the difference. But if you just smooth that out a little bit, you can really see how much he looks like he's moving like an animatronic now. Um, um, that's really the basics of animatronic movement. Um, but there's something else that I want to make sure other people know. And that is realistic camera movements. Now this also has something to do with the motion editor. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're just going to go in here, and we're going to grab our camera one, and we're just going to get it to a good place. I say, like, right here, looking up at them. Now, realistic movements. Um, really, you don't... The thing that I used to do, especially in the uh, two slow stage performance I was working on, is I just did this. I just moved the camera all around like this. And this doesn't look that bad, but there's a way more simpler and way overall better looking thing you could do. And that's using the jitter and the procedural tab again. Now, if we turn this up, you can see. Oh. My bad. Let's just slightly move it down here. Okay. So as you can probably see right now, 
This that does not look realistic. I'm just gonna do that. So like, um, are you high, Pat? That is not okay. Um, he just looks like he's having a seizure, but it's pretty simple. All I have to do is go to the smooth and just drag that like about three or four times, and then you get this. Now, if it's not moving too much for you, all you have to do is make the jitter go up higher and make it smooth again. And there you go. And that was way faster than just going on to different frames and moving the camera itself. Now, another thing for realistic camera moving that I want to get out the way is field of view. So say when Freddy turns, you want the camera to just zoom in on his face. And then when he goes here, we just want it to zoom out. So look here. We can, in the first frame, we can see it um, just zooming out instead of going in. And we do not want that. Now, this also has the same effect with lighting. If we were to take this, and we were to just change the intensity to get higher. We can see that in some cases, like say we want this, and we want it to get lighter. Um, now, uh, this is the, the whole motion thing is very weird, but there are a few times I've had animating that lights will fade to black. And this is all because of the whole motion and everything. Now, we don't want this uh, camera thing to happen. So what you're going to do is you're going to go on to here. And you're going to just close transform. You don't have to worry about it. And we're going to go up to field of view. You can already tell what I'm going to do. Just go ahead and press 1. Not 2. I think that 1 is a much better fit for this. So as you can see, instead of going out, it will just zoom in on his face. And then it'll zoom out. Again, you can apply the jitter effect. And get that nice motion. We don't want that. Oh, jeez. But you, you probably don't want to <laughs> make it <clears throat> that jittery. <laughs> um, but that's the basics of making a um, whole animatronic show stage realistic as performance now before i end this video something else that i just want to mention is i if you're making a realistic type animation don't do this don't make his arms go out don't make his heads do this now you can move his torso kind of like this if you want but not like this try to be reasonable with how animatronics could bend their limbs because well, like obviously animatronic can't do this um and that's all i have to show really um now i did get a comment from someone that uh, wanted me to make a whole item disappear and reappear so the next video i'll make will definitely be for that um so just stay tuned and the next tutorial, I'll show you guys how to make an make a prop disappear and reappear. All right, guys. See you on the flip side.